We're becoming a nation fixated with our bodies. A staggering three in four of us are unhappy with our body shape. But for some, that unhappiness can run much deeper, and currently 1.6 million people in the UK have an eating disorder. We're three weeks into an eight-week course designed to help three women with different eating disorders develop a healthier relationship with food and their bodies. The course is led by dietitian Ursula Philpott and overseen by consultant psychiatrist Dr Helena Fox. Last week, Ursula helped the girls confront their food fears in the supermarket. This week, I really want the group to focus in on their relationship with their bodies. I want to know how they feel about them and why. I've invited the girls to have 3D plaster casts of their torsos and hope they'll be able to confront their distorted body image. Emma, 34, suffers from anorexia. I absolutely hate how I look. I don't like any mention on my body or image because I just kind of want to shut it out. Mina, 32, suffers from bulimia. I definitely feel enormous. I want to be thin, but I don't want to want to be thin. I just, I want to not care, really. 19-year-old Erin suffers from a form of anorexia known as anorexia binge purge subtype. I feel disgust in, in the way that I look now. I feel ugly. That is the coldest bit when you're first here. Erin <laughs> has volunteered to go first. I'm really excited for getting the body cast done because I used to always be a really oddly person, but the eating disorder's kind of taken that away from me. Ursula has advised the girls to eat breakfast beforehand, as standing up for a long time on an empty stomach can make you faint. However, Erin, who often faints due to the fact that she regularly binges and purges, starts to feel lightheaded. Yeah, I think I'm going to faint. OK. We've got you. Purging regularly is a very dangerous activity because when one induces vomiting, one vomits up potassium, and this causes a low level of potassium in the blood and therefore puts the heart at risk of developing a wrong rhythm, which can sometimes be fatal. We need to get her down onto her knees, yeah. The sufferer will experience feeling faint, feeling dizzy, feeling cramps, and sometimes collapse. So give me some sugar and some potassium. The fainting probably was something to do with the anorexia and the potassium deficiency as well. Oh, OK. Are you OK? Yeah, I'm feeling better already. When I was at my lowest weight, I couldn't really go outside of the house without feeling really faint. As a result of Erin's fainting bout, dietitian Ursula wants the group to eat some more before continuing with the task. But for a group with eating disorders, mealtime can be a frightening experience. I was expecting a little bit of fish. Not a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so the portion I've looks got... a bit shocking to you. Yes. Yeah. How's yours, Mina? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's got quite a lot of dressing on it, and I wouldn't mm. usually put dressing on a salad. Dressing on there doesn't, doesn't worry you too much. Mm. It would probably worry me more if... Mm. ..if I let it, I suppose. Yeah. We're not designed to have mm. fat-free diets. Our diet should be about 30% right. fat, actually. Erin ordered a pizza. Erin's tendency is to overeat on highly palatable or high-fat foods and then purge them. And she agreed that actually she would try and have just a few slices of pizza but keep those down. So you all right, Erin? Do you want me yeah, to take yeah, it away? Um, <laughs> soon, yeah. yeah. I think so. You don't want to be feeling really full and like you want to be sick. But Erin, who's used to binging, is finding the pizza hard to resist. OK, should we put them to one side? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Later, we'll see the girls go on to have their casts made. But will Emma be able to face the reality of what she's done to her body? <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the diet swap, lard-loving Dawn and calorie-counting Charlene are supposed to be swapping diets. But so far, Charlene's been making excuses to avoid Dawn's food. Lunch today is a picnic. And for Charlene, there's a feast of Dawn's favourite fixes. But for Dawn, who's only had a glass of water all day, it's just a solitary cheese sandwich. It's nice to eat something. Mmm. <laughs> the amount of cheese alone just puts me off. I wasn't keen on the water for breakfast either, but, you know, I had it. <laughs> what are you doing with that? Looking at it. Why? See what it is. Oh! Pick it up and eat it. Go on! Dawn's vast portions would overwhelm anyone, but Charlene's minuscule mouthfuls are barely making a dent. 
Just eat the tomatoes off it, then. But even the tomatoes right. aren't nice. It ain't going to kill you. I'm starting to get a little bit tired of a moaning, pushing food about, holding it in her mouth and just not giving this a go. And as the day wears on, the tension builds with another tiny dinner of chicken curry and rice for dawn. Well, I eat this. I really don't. It's disgusting, was the word, <laughs> for the brown rice. I don't know how you eat this. Whilst for Charlene, it's Dawn's favourite, noodles, chilli and melted Stilton. How can you have just this little? There's, there's nothing here. The amount of cheese you put in, that, the blue cheese is quite... It's probably very fatty compared to, like, the yeah. other types of cheese. The taste of it is just, like, really sickly. And the endless excuses really start to get Dawn's back up. Have you finished with that now? Yeah. Because that has not even been touched, really. What did you think was going to happen when we come here? You knew you were eating my food, didn't you? Yeah. So why aren't you eating it? I am eating it. You're not, though. It's a diet swap. And I'm playing my part, but you're not playing yours. Can you put on my plate what is a normal size portion? So why didn't you eat that amount? Because I couldn't. I did try the mints, despite the fact the smell of it really, really put me off, and I still didn't like it. Charlene seems to be really resisting the diet swap. Whilst I appreciate that Dawn's portions are enormous, Charlene just isn't making enough effort. The meat in Dawn's diet will provide iron that Charlene is so badly lacking, and it'll also give us some much-needed energy, so she has got to start trying harder. With Charlene in denial about her issues with food, Dr Christian sought reinforcement from home. Dearest loving Charlene, hope you are doing well and not missing home too much. We hope you're increasing your portion sizes and finishing all your meals. It would be nice to see you. <laughs> it would be nice to see you with a bit more of an appetite. We do worry about you, especially when you don't want to eat or just sleep. Lots of love and God bless. The letter from home clearly had a big effect on Charlene. But the question is, will it make a difference? It's another day and another fry-up. And before long, they're both back to their old tricks. How do you like what is that? Deep-fried duck eggs. Look at that. That is just superb. I'm satisfied as long as I get my... Do you find this really, really greasy when you eat it? Mm. I don't think there's any joy in the dark sex. I find your breakfast always so salty. Mm. And I'm not used to the salt and then it's like... It's like eating teaspoons of salt. Yeah. Do you put added salt in your bacon or not? No, no not at all. No. Is it salted bacon then? No. Best not to think about it then. Best just to get it down the neck. Mm. I'm really, really full now. Although Dawn is sticking to Charlene's diet, it's clear she's still missing fatty foods. To ensure she stays on track, Dr Christian has a message to show her from the States, a vision of her future. I'm Christina Robleski. I'm 40 years old, and I'm about 43 stone. You just don't realize that it's going on until it's too late. Back in 2006, I began noticing some health issues. We're diagnosed with cellulitis in the leg. Then we're diagnosed as diabetic. And I'm diagnosed with high blood pressure. About a year, two years ago, these little blisters would come up and they itch really bad. Those are what's commonly referred to as diabetic ulcers. When you're diabetic, you're more prone to getting these things and they're very difficult to cure. I don't want this pain. I don't want all these health problems. But once one thing starts to happen, it seems as if it just continues and it continues and it's a vicious, vicious cycle. Without my husband and my son, I don't think I could make it. I don't want to die like this. 
Dawn, you're heading down the pathway that I've already been down. And I'm asking you from one woman to another to live for yourself. You've got that opportunity to do something now. Don't wait. Gosh, I've always worried about diabetes because, you know, the diabetes has obviously been a major health factor with her. And it's so reliant on other people. And That's to hammer home shocking. this message and encourage Dawn to stick to the diet, Dr Christian's keeping up the pressure. You're going to be flying out to America to go and spend some time with that lady. Gosh. How do you feel about that? Well, quite upset that I'm going to meet her. You've both got the same health risks. Yeah. It's just that hers have happened and yours are waiting to happen. Yeah. She doesn't want me to be like her. And I do not want to be, in ten years' time, making that movie for somebody else. It's day three in the feeding clinic, and you could cut the atmosphere with a knife. For super skinny Charlene, dinner tonight is the mother of all roasts, with chicken and stuffing, pork, beef and five roast potatoes, followed by cheesecake and chocolate biscuits. While for super-sized Dawn, it's broccoli and brown rice. Again. How do you even cut this? How does that meal taste? Um, I don't want to be rude, but not very pleasant, <laughs> to be fair. I mean, you've moved that spud around four times now, Charlene. Why do you think you do that? I don't know. Just eat it. This is killing me to sit here while you arse about with food and play with it while I'm sitting here starving hungry. After that, it's easier for you to like cobble up stuff because you're used to it and I'm not. It's not easy for me to starve though, is it? I think because she's hungry and she's getting really like crazy psycho. It's like talking to a toddler. Don't play with your food. You put it in your mouth, put a bigger spoonful in your mouth. Don't take an hour and a half, two hours to eat your dinner. It's making me feel really, 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 really full. My tummy sticks out. Despite a letter of support from her mum and Dawn's frustration, Dr Christian feels Charlene is still not embracing the diet swap and decides to step in. I'm not sure we've cracked you yet yeah. on the eating front. I think you're still being very resistant. You're not eating enough, are you? You still haven't finished a whole meal. I need you to show me that you can eat more. Mm. You're not going to vomit, you're not going to be sick. The food is not going to do anything horrible to you. In fact, it's going to do you a lot of good. You're lacking mm. iron. You need that meat for these last few meals that you've got. Just really go for it. Surprise yourself, surprise mm. me. OK. All right? Yeah. OK, come on. Mm. Although Charlene shouldn't be eating meat to the level Dawn is, it does provide many nutrients vital for a healthy body, including protein to aid muscle growth and repair, iron to make red blood cells which carry oxygen around the body, and vitamin B12, essential for a healthy nervous system and releasing energy from the food we eat.